Welcome to the World of Rare Disease, a show that focuses on awareness and education about rare and complex disorders. These episodes are produced and hosted by Rare New England. You can find us at www.rarenewengland.org. Today's show features Rare New England founder Julie Gortzi, board member Lois Foster, and organizational volunteer myself, Lisa Deck. I'd like to take a moment to t talk about why we all became involved with Rare New England, starting with Julie. Hi there. Uh, yes, I'm Julie. I'm a nurse and I am also a rare disease patient. Um, I was diagnosed about six years ago, but um, with my education, I never learned about rare diseases. So I became uh, very active in uh, advocating for patients with rare diseases. And then about two and a half years ago, we formed Rare New England. Great. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Um, Lois, why did you become involved with RNA? I am actually a clinical social worker in private practice, and it was through some patient experiences that I first became aware of rare and complicated disorders. And my interest grew, and that really led me to Rare New England and joining the board of Rare New England. Wonderful. Um, and I became involved with Rare New England um, as a patient. I was a patient for almost 20 years, um, stroke survivor. And a couple years ago, I noticed an article in my local newspaper talking about Rare New England. And just three years ago, I had suffered from three strokes, my fourth stroke, and that is when I was diagnosed with a new rare disease. Um, and I decided to use my volunteer and patient experience to help out with Rare New England. So I'm thrilled to be involved today. Um, I did want to talk about why did you start Rare New England? Why did you create this organization? How did the idea come to you? Uh, let's see. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a nurse, and I never learned about rare diseases working. Uh, in acute care in a hospital and through my education. Um, I learned about rare diseases and the rare disease community the hard way when I was diagnosed. Um, I've had symptoms practically my whole life and uh, it wasn't until, uh, as I said, six years ago that I got a diagnosis for the rare disease that I've had all these symptoms for. So I, um, once I received that diagnosis, I made uh, connections with other advocacy groups. I reached out looking for information, um, trying to find support myself. And I found out that there's so many other patients involved in the rare disease community doing the same thing. They're looking for information on their diseases. They're trying to find others who are going through the same problems. They're facing the same obstacles. So as you can see, I, you know, I've, I've learned the hard way about rare diseases. Um, as I was reaching out, I also made contact with several other people who are involved in the rare disease community, say physicians, other medical professionals, and even patients and families who are very good advocates, awesome advocates in the rare disease community. And it was, as I said, about two and a half years ago that we all came together and formed Rare New England with the idea um, to try to find solutions, try to help find support for patients and families. Um, and just to try to help them have a better quality of life. Right. Well, it's amazing what's been done. Lois, would you like to talk to us a little bit about the mission of Rare New England? Sure. I'd be happy to. Rare New England's mission is to provide New England patients, families, and providers um, with opportunities regarding education, awareness. We build foundations for support, all in the hopes of improving patient quality of life. Wonderful. That's great. And how do you accomplish that on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, let's see. I mean, we get into um, answering emails, uh, talking to patients on the phone when they call, looking for support and looking for idea of resources. We try to connect with uh, other communities that are offering uh, programs with resources for patients and families. Um, we create and implement programs. Uh, going out and teaching even medical professionals and legislators and other uh, healthcare professionals about rare diseases, hoping that they might be able to see what's really going on in the rare disease world and be able to come up with treatments or um, you know other answers for these patients. Right, it's really true, and it sounds as though Rare New England kind of has their hand in everything. 
um, but I really want to talk about some of the specific initiatives and programs that um, you know are official and I think there's so much unofficial business that happens too but one thing I really want to talk about is the conferences I know patient conferences are really important to rare New England in a way to get out um, into the community so I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about that okay yeah be happy to um, uh, we do hold annual conferences this actually started with uh, before we were even ran New England when I held a support group for the disease that I've been diagnosed with um, I found that patients and families love the idea of coming together, getting information, and then meeting others, and being in the same room with someone else who has a complex disease. It's just amazing um, to see. So the idea was to bring in as much information as we could. And one thing I do want to bring up is uh, in the rare disease world, there are not very many specialists there to treat these patients and the specialists who are there are so overwhelmed, they're so overworked. There's really not a whole lot of time to be able to explain details um, and give as much information to these patients and families who are really hurting. So the idea was to bring in the professionals, we bring in the physicians, we bring in legislators, we bring in some of the wish granting organizations so that the patients and families can ask questions and they can get the information so they're able to go on and make better decisions for themselves. So we do bring in physicians. We have the annual conference. It's around the New England area. We pick a state each year and we bring in speakers. Um, the speakers are that have been awesome. So it's physicians. We have a legislator coming to one of our conferences in November um, to talk about what we can be doing. Um, we bring in say, uh, some of the wish granting organizations so the patients and families will hear from them. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really awesome opportunity for patients and families. And during these conferences, we also get medical professionals and others who right. come in because they want to learn more information right. about the rare disease. It sounds like you really provide a way to empower and educate patients. Um, can you tell us exactly about this conference in November that's happening and where that is? Uh, well, we're going to be uh, partnering with Canberg Therapeutics, and it's going to be held in Ayer, Massachusetts, so on November 10th. 10th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <Great>. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's an all-day conference, um, and we do have uh, someone who is coming, one of our board members who works in Glamour, is going to talk about clinical trials. We have someone coming from uh, New England Epilepsy Foundation who's going to be talking about uh, some of their programs with mm -hmm. the what they're doing, the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, let's see, what else do we have in there? Uh, we're going to have talks about the ketogenic diet. Okay. We're actually going to also have a teen event. Wow. Uh, where there's, um, we're going to be bringing in teens to be able to be in the same room together. We've done right. that in the past mm -hmm. as well. And we always had a, a you know, good outcome with that. Wonderful. It sounds like a great opportunity for yeah. patients and families. Mm -hmm. um, another program that Rare New England does mm -hmm. is the Genetic Recruitment Program. Um, and Lois, would you like to tell us a little bit yeah, about that? I'd be happy to. Um, this is a newly designed program, actually, that we're going to be launching in the fall of 2019. It was really designed because of the critical shortage um, in the field of genetics. And so what we're going to be doing is two evenings, um, fall and spring 2019 at Mass General Hospital and Boston Medical Center. And the focus really will be introducing the students, interns, and residents to the world of genetics, wow. biomedical, research, clinical uh, genetics, and really highlighting the day um, in terms of what doctors experience in the genetic world with presentations, case highlights, um, and also some patient participation. And then in addition to that, what we're hoping to create, of course, in the conclusion is some questions, some answers, and some ongoing learning opportunities um, for those students as well. So we're really excited. It's really right. a one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very excited to be able to launch that in That's the fall. Great. Excellent. Yeah. That's a great yeah. way to yeah. um, get some new people in to help Absolutely. really yeah. understand rare disease. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. It's crucial. It's a crucial need for the yeah. disease community. Definitely. Um, another program we do is legislation. We talk a lot about yes. legislation and um, I have actually been an advocate for almost 20 years for heart disease and stroke but in the rare world what Rare New England does is really try to provide policies and advocate for legislation that helps patients and their mm -hmm. families. Um, there really is a need for it to be understood at all levels. 
Um, I know from Rare New England, I have worked um, with Julie and others on policies that really will empower and educate the doctors, the medical um, facilities, and the patients. There is the local, state, and federal level. Um, we have been fortunate enough to travel to Washington, D.C. to meet with mm -hmm. federal legislators to talk about rare disease patients, their families, and the complex disorders and the needs of them. And I think it is sometimes lost um, on everyday people because you don't realize until you're a patient what needs exist. Um, on the local level, we have definitely met um, with different boards in town and things like that so that um, rare disease is on the forefront of people's minds. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, most recently, we have been working at the state level um, in trying to introduce a bill to create a rare disease council. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity to create a council on the state level that will be guided by the um, Department of Public Health, but will include a variety of medical and genetic um, partners really educating and being able to help create a system of care for rare patients that can help everywhere in the state. Um, Julie has actually in just the last couple weeks been meeting with legislators and would you like to speak to that just briefly? Sure, uh, let's see, what is the update? Um, so it's a little um, back backward on it. Um, we have been working on this bill in Massachusetts for the past four years. And um, at the time, Paul Hero was a state representative and he had taken that on as sponsor of the bill. Um, and unfortunately, it takes a long time for bills right. to go through to get passed to law, any bill. So what's happened now that Paul Hero is mayor of Alderboro, we needed to get out there and find mm -hmm. other uh, sponsors for this bill. So I was able to do that. I reached out to different House members and Senate members. and. I do have uh, Representative Joseph McKenna and Representative Hannah Kane, who are, to, they are so eager to have this bill passed. They both have a uh, family history of rare disease, a complex care disease, so they are all gung-ho. They understand why this council is needed uh, under legislation. And I've also been working with uh, Senator Richard Ross who is going to take the bill from the Senate side and you know, to push that through as well. So we will have almost like double chances of being right. able to get this bill passed. Right. Um, so we have had meetings and we are also working with the National Organization for Red Disorders um, to gain their support and be able to get this bill passed to help the rare disease community. But it is the whole idea of bringing the stakeholders together to be able to come out of their corners. They're all working hard. We have to think the people on this council will be the physicians, there'll be legislators, there'll be um, representatives in the school department, many, and they're all doing fantastic jobs. But when it comes to the rare disease, they all need to really come together um, out of their separate corners, talk to each other and try to help to with the solutions for the rare disease community. And we also need to make sure that everyone, all the stakeholders in rare disease and all the, you know, the families of these patients are also reaching out to their representatives and senators so that when these bills go in front of them, they're going to know what it means so right. to help get these bills passed. So it sounds like the ball is, is rolling. Mm -hmm. um, we have a new push coming forward and I yeah. think there is plenty that um, everyday people can do to help rare patients and this is mm -hmm. a very easy way to do that. So I know on mm -hmm. our website we do have ways to help impact legislation. Mm -hmm. So that is something that um, as a community we're very excited to share that information because we need yeah. all the help we can get to try to get this yeah, bill passed exactly. yeah. to truly make a difference. Exactly. Um, another yeah. fantastic um, program that I know Rare New England is doing is the speaker series and mm -hmm. I would love to hear more about that and I'm sure our viewers would too. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we have the Rare Disease Today Rare Disease Day speaker series that we launched this year uh, on February 28th, which was the um, rare, it's rare Disease Day annually, Rare Disease Day, February 28th. Um, and it went over really well. We went into six uh, New England academic facilities and we brought in a physician who happens to be a clinical geneticist expert for many years um, in what he's doing, uh, caring for the rare disease community and also educating. So we brought him into these six different facilities and he brought in a patient speaker. So he started off with talking about a specific disease, giving a short, like a 15 minute talk about uh, the disease and then the patient speaker would come in and talk for about 20 minutes after that. 
and then everything would open up in a question and answer session. And I'll tell you, it was just amazing because you're, you're sitting there and you know you, you've made this program and all these healthcare professionals are sitting there and they're, they're listening, you know they're listening because they're asking questions, they're making comments, they're, um, you know, they're keeping the conversation going. So it really gives us some hope that at least the people in that room, they're going to uh, be able to recognize, hopefully, a rare disease patient if one comes by them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may never see a rare disease patient, but if they do see a complex patient, we want them to be able to think, well, Thank gee, you. maybe I don't know what this is, but I did, you know, I did go to that presentation, mm -hmm. and this is what I learned, and gee, maybe uh, I should go to the next step. Right. So it really is a fantastic program, and we're looking to expand that Great. into 10 facilities right. for 2019. Right. That sounds like it's very impactful, and, and hopefully that's truly making that difference to the patients out there, mm -hmm. and I think that's wonderful. Um, speaking of that, I know Rare New England is also known mm -hmm. as a place for resources, a place that a patient can go to to learn more. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about how Rare New England does that. Sure. I'd be happy to talk a little bit about that. So one of the things, of course, we feel really is very critical to patients, providers, stakeholders, is really having access to resources and the availability of that and being able to connect to those opportunities. And so our website has a tremendous amount of information for example, um, support organizations, make a wish, adaptive equipment, things of that nature. And so I would encourage our viewers to take a look at the website, look at the online resource directory, and become familiar. We are always updating and looking for other opportunities to be able to have that information um, current. Right, wonderful. Yeah. I know I've, I've looked at the website and boy, there's a, a wealth of information. So that's a great place for people to go. Yes. Um, another important concept in rare disease, and one you may notice at, in our backdrop with the mm -hmm. zebra print here, um, is because zebras are a symbol of hope and inspiration to rare disease patients and their families. When you hear hoofbeats, think zebras, not horses. Thinking about zebras is important to me and others living with rare disease. Life with rare disease oftentimes necessitates ingenuity and creativity, particularly when looking for a cause. With over 7,000 rare diseases, we need patients, medical professionals, and the community to think si outside of the box for diagnosis and treatments. Many rare groups, patients, and communities have initiated the zebra as their symbol and love to show their ze zebra pride. As Rare New England, we're proud to share our zebra pride and inspiration with all of you. Finally, I'd like to have Lois speak to our community and introduce the idea of Rare New England in motion. So Rare New England in motion was something that as we were sitting around and talking and preparing for the show, we thought, wouldn't it be a nice opportunity to allow the viewers to be exchanged, to have the exchange of information coming into us here at Rare New England and being able to respond and share information back. So r and &E in Motion is what we thought we might call, call that closing segment where we are allowing viewers to send us their comments, questions, so that we can respond to them next time on air for the next show. So titled r and &E in Motion. So please send us questions, comments. We would be happy to respond. Wonderful. It's a great yes. way to have dialogue amongst ourselves mm -hmm. and our viewers. Yes. I would like to uh, share our um, email address. Yes, if you please. Don't Thank mind. you. Uh, so if anybody, anybody does have any questions or comments, they could reach out to info at rarenewengland.org. Wonderful. Info at rarenewengland.org. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, finally, I'd like to... Um, Thank Julian Lois for sharing such important information with us today. From all of us at Rare New England, we would like to take this opportunity to thank Mansfield Cable. A special thank you to patients, families, and providers who keep Rare New England in motion. Don't forget to look us up on our website. We thank you for listening today. <laughs>